Hey there Ford van owners. Today on your 2006 Ford van we're going to be installing Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 air helper springs for the rear axle. And this is what our airbags look like when they're installed. They're going to sit between your frame and your rear axle to provide load leveling support across the back of your vehicle. They offer up to 5,000 pounds of load leveling support. Now you want to keep in mind that this doesn't increase the amount of weight that you can carry in your vehicle, just how much it can assist in supporting. They operate between 5 and 100 PSI. 5 PSI is for when your vehicle is unloaded and 100 PSI is when it's at its maximum load. In most situations you won't really exceed about 50 PSI as that's pretty sufficient for the loads that most vehicles are designed to carry. Compared to your factory jounce bumper, this is going to provide support throughout the entire length of suspension travel. Your jounce bumper only contacts once the suspension is bottomed out. So this is going to provide a smoother support across that so you won't have a sudden bang impact when the jounce bumper contacts, it's going to ease it in smoothly. Additionally, these can be adjusted from side to side to vary for uneven loads. So you could have higher pressure on one side than another to bring you back to center. Having a level vehicle can help restore some lost braking and handling performance. By leveling it out, your suspension is going to have the correct geometry and your tires are going to be contacting the road the way they were designed. This is going to cause them to wear properly instead of wearing excessively in certain spots, giving you more surface area contact to the road, ensuring that it's easier to maintain control of the vehicle. Additionally, when you brake, most of the braking force is done with the front of your vehicle and the weight transfers onto that. If you're not level and even, the weight may not transfer properly. By making it level, it transfers the way it should, and that increased contact of your tire to the road is going to reduce your stopping distance. On larger RVs like this, they can also help minimize sway. So what this means for you is you're going to have a safer, more comfortable ride when taking your RV on vacation. You and your passengers will appreciate the better ride quality and safe trip that you're going to get on your way there. It's an easy no-drill installation. Let's show you how to do that now. We'll begin our installation under the rear of the vehicle, just above our rear axle. We need to remove the jounce bumpers that are located on each side. On your driver's side, you may have some wiring that you need to pull up to get out of the way to access the bolt. And there may also be a bracket that is just above your jounce bumper. This is going to attach to the stud that's attached to our jounce bumper, but we're gonna to need to leave that bracket there. So we'll use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the nut. We'll take our jounce bumper off and then leave that bracket in that position. Then slide our jounce bumper down and set it aside as we won't be reinstalling it. Now we're gonna to need to give ourselves some additional clearance in order to get our airbag installed. So we're gonna use a pole jack underneath the frame to lift up on the body. And we're doing this because we have it on a lift. If you're gonna be doing it on the ground, I recommend you just place a floor jack underneath the frame to lift it up. You could also use your leveling jacks if you have them installed. Whenever lifting your vehicle with hydraulics, you should always put jack stands underneath of it to stay safe. We'll now perform pre-assembly on our airbags. We'll start by taking the air fitting and threading it into the air port on the top of our airbag. And then we'll use a half inch wrench, tighten that down. You want to make sure you get at least a couple of threads that are covered in sealant tightened down in. We'll then place the roll plate on top. And then we're going to put our bracket on it. Your brackets are left and right. So you want to make sure you've got the appropriate side for when the one you're working on. We're going to be doing the driver's side first. So we've got our driver's side bracket here. It will fit around your air fitting just like that. Line up the holes with the top of the airbag and your roll plate. We'll then use one of the shorter bolts that come in the kit with a lock washer. We're gonna thread that in. We're doing that on the side that's away from our L shape here. And on the inside of the L shape, for this hole here, we're gonna be using the stud with the short side facing down. Now this stud, depending on your motorhome and how much clearance you're able to get between the frame and the axle, you may need to remove this stud and install it at a later step. 
this bolt here you can leave loose. I am gonna snug it down as I do have to remove the stud due to our clearance. So I'm gonna tighten this down and then take the stud back out. I was just using that to line it up. Then on the bottom, we'll place on our roll plate and our bottom bracket. The bottom bracket, you want these holes to be facing towards the front of the vehicle. And we want to also make sure that the outer hole here is lined up with the edge that is closest to where the outside of the vehicle is going to be. So it's going to be this, this is going to be the outside of the vehicle. We want to use that hole on the far edge there. We'll then take the short bolt and lock washer that comes in your kit to secure it to the bottom of the bag. We'll then tighten those down and torque them to the specifications found in your instructions. We now need to lift our airbag into position. The stud that we pre-assembled into our airbag is gonna go through the hole here where our jounce bumper used to be. And you may or may not need to remove this stud in order to get the airbag in position. If you have a bracket like we do here, it's gonna secure to that stud when it slides through it. You just wanna work the airbag into position. You wanna hook the top lip first and then push the bottom in. You do have to get around this brake hose, so be careful not to damage it when going around it. Once you've got it in place, the upper lip you can see sits here in our bracket, and the bottom bracket will sit on top of our axle. Now if you were unable to get the airbag in and you had to remove the stud, now's the time that you're going to want to reinstall it. You got to get everything lined back up again, and then it just threads in by hand. With our airbag in place and stud through the frame, we can slide our bracket under the stud. After you've got your bracket slid on the stud, we're gonna top that off with a flat washer followed by a locking nut. If you don't have a bracket, then you would just simply put on the flat washer and locking nut. Now we'll take our coarse thread small bolt, place a flat washer on it. We're gonna line it up with the hole on our bracket, slide it through the hole in the frame place a flat washer and a nut on the other side. Depending on the options you have on your motorhome, this hole may be used to secure some items. So if there's a bracket or a zip tie there, you may have to relocate it. We'll then tighten out our hardware. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket for the side bolt. And a 15 millimeter socket or wrench for the two bolts that are on the inside of the frame. One is gonna be the stud nut and the other one is the bolt right here. Now we can go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. On each corner of your lower bracket, you'll have a square hole. You're gonna drop your carriage bolts down through those square holes. Then place your straps onto your carriage bolts. If you look at your strap here, you'll see that one side has a sharp bend and one is a more curvature bend to it. That's gonna to go towards the rear to help it clear the brake line. The brake line is gonna go between the carriage bolt and the axle, just like that. On the bottom of your carriage bolts, you'll then place flat washers followed by locking nuts. You can now tighten them down you may have to tighten these unevenly in order for the carriage bolts to clear your brake line. Normally you tighten them down back and forth until they're even, but this one you want to pay more attention to how the carriage bolts and your brake line are interacting with each other. Then you can torque your hardware to the specifications found in your instructions. You finished installing your passenger side, we'll install our heat shield. To install the heat shield, you'll want to take the center tabs, bend them straight out like that, and you're going to bend it back parallel with the big face again. This is going to give you an air gap. It's going to sit on your exhaust in a manner like that. We'll prepare our hose clamps. So take your hose clamps that come in your kit undo the clamp all the way that'll allow it to slide around your exhaust 
and put the clamp back together. And we're just gonna run it in just so it holds itself on there. We're gonna do that with our other clamp as well. You can then take your heat shield, slide your clamps up. You're gonna go around the ears that we bent and tighten it down. Now with both of them installed, you can take your ends and bend them back just a little bit. That'll create an air gap between your exhaust and your airbag, and the heat shield will then dissipate the heat, keeping it from transferring to the airbag. Now depending on your van and what you're using it for, the length can vary, and you may need more hose to complete your installation. After you cut your airline hose, slide it into the Quick connect fitting on the airbag that just pushes in. I like to kind of go in and out to make sure that I'm all the way seated. And then we're gonna route the hose here back towards where we're gonna mount our airline fill connections. When you're cutting your airline hose, you wanna make sure you use the proper cutting tool. You can pick up hose cutters here at eTrailer.com. These ensure that it cuts it clean and square so that way it has a proper seal inside the quick connect fittings. We then routed our hose towards the rear of the vehicle following the frame and the factory wiring, zip tying it along the way. When routing your hose, you wanna avoid anything that's going to move, such as your steering and suspension components and anything excessively hot, such as your exhaust. We've decided to mount ours on an existing bracket located at the back of the customer's vehicle. We simply drilled out a couple of holes using a 5 16th drill bit, slid the ends through and then used the nut star washer, flat washer, rubber washer, and nut to secure it to the bracket. Now we can air up our bags and check for leaks. You wanna spray all of your fittings and ensure that there's no bubbles present. You can see here, we've just got the small bubbles. What you're looking for is the presence of bubbles that continue to occur. That would indicate a leak. Since we're good here, we're gonna move on to the rest of our fittings and verify there's no leaks there. And with no leaks, we're all set. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs for the rear axle on your 2006 Ford van.